Hey everyone, Kevin here. What I'd like to do in this video is show you this gamepad. It's from Genjame. It's called the Genjame S5 Bluetooth Gamepad. Works with tablets, phones, smart boxes, smart TVs, and I'm hoping my retro Pi setup. Now this was sent to me by Gearbest, and very kind of them to send me this gamepad. It retails for about $10. I've got the white version, but there's also a black version available as well. So it's about $10 free delivery right okay so we've got a manual here and I've had a quick look at this before because I did show you guys this briefly last week when they sent me a few controllers English on one side Chinese on the other micro micro B USB connection apparently it has a 400 milliamp battery but it says 420 on the back. So really this kind of looks like a PlayStation controller. Looks very similar. And the Genjame button, it's got one, two, three, four, which kind of mimics the one, two, three, four you get in the old PlayStation 3 controller, um, PlayStation 4, etc. So you've got the D-pad, you've got the thumb buttons down here. R1, R2, L1, L2, A, B, X, Y. And that is a little bit different than Nintendo controllers, which is B, A, Y, X. You know, this is more like the Xbox layout. So, I've not really played with this yet. I still need to connect up to my phone and my RetroPie. First impressions are, bearing in mind this is $10. This seems okay for the price. It really does seem like a decent little controller for the price. Feels well made. Um, these little bits here offer good grip and it's kind of clicky the real test will obviously come from playing with it but seems okay you know um you know like things like playstation 4 controllers and things as good as they are they do cost in the uk anyway about 50 pounds so you can pick this up for about seven pounds in the uk um fairly cheap so what i'm going to do is connect it to my phone connect it to my retro pie and we're going to see how this plays, and I'll give you my thoughts on it. Okay, guys, so I've got it connected to my mobile now, and I've got Dan the Man here, which is a game that I highlighted in a few other controller reviews, such as the 8-bit Do, little small controller there. Um, now, I didn't get it working at first, and I'll show you what I mean. What happened was, see that it says I'm connected via Gen Game. When I signed it to Bluetooth, it said I'd connected to something like New Game N1, despite the fact this is the S5. But then it didn't work, and see this button here? It was going between 2 and 3 instead of 1 and 2. Now, this relates to the different modes. There's modes. One is a, um, like an iCade mode. One is an iOS mode. One is an, like a handle mode, they call it, for Android. It's four different modes. I thought it was something to do with, you know, like assigning different controllers. It's not. It's more to do with the way that you connect it. And if you connect it using a different mode, it will assign buttons in a different way. When I assigned it the first time and it was flashing between 2 and 3, nothing was working. I was pushing buttons and it was changing the volume and it was just all messed up and I didn't think it worked. But I tried it again and this time it's worked and it works good. Yeah, it works good. I can actually use the thumbstick or the D-pad. Now, really, I should really be playing something like Street Fighter or something like that to illustrate how this works. But, it does work. I'm not going to say it's as good as a PlayStation 3 controller, because it's not. But for $10, £7 a UK, not too bad. And, you know, it does seem to work. So, I tried it with a few other games. I'll show you Sonic. Now, Sonic, again, it's not really going to illustrate how it works with lots, lots of different buttons because you only need one button. All the buttons do the same thing. But it does work. And the reason I want to show you that game is because this is a Sega game. And the problem that I had the last time with the 8-bit door controller, if I can get it there. No, I don't want to cancel. Try to speed things up doing it this way and it's not working. Okay, so this is Shinobi. Another Sega game. And when I used the little controller, the 8 bit door controller, it didn't really work well. And what would happen would be it wouldn't move, but you could fire the weapons. 
And same thing's happening here. Because I've tried it with this, because you know I went through the same problem with before with another controller, I realize it's nothing to do with the controller itself. This is just an issue with the way this game is set up and the way that it connects to Bluetooth controllers. I don't know why, I really don't, but I'll show you just now what I mean. So I'll we'll start this game. So you'll see this just now. What happens is I can fire the weapons and no D-pad as a sign, nothing works. You can pause it there. It's the same problem I had with this controller. So this is really the game. The reason I'm showing you this is not to show, you know, not to say this can, doesn't work. It does work. It's just to illustrate again that sometimes when you're playing a mobile phone game, it's not often the fault of the controller. If you set it up all correctly, Depending on the game, it just might not be configured, it might not be assigned correctly, and the buttons might not work well. This is more to do with the game developer, in my opinion. But the controller does seem to work well with other games, so no complaints there, really. What I'm going to do now is just, you know, I'm going to try and get it set up with my Retro Pie, and we'll see how it works with a proper fighting game. Well, guys, I was hoping to show you how this controller worked with my Retro Pie set up, but. I can't get it connected. If you look at configured input there, you see when I push it, I actually says keyboard, and it doesn't do anything there. So at this point, it's changed between one and two. One is what they call handle mode. Two is kind of like their mouse and multimedia mode. The problem is that it seems to be connecting via the second mode, but it registers the controller as a keyboard, which is not what you want. When you try to configure the buttons, it's coming up, volume up, volume down, and things like that. Another thing to note is that I think I said it was micro B earlier on. It's actually mini B. It's the same type of USB cable that we, you would use with a, a PlayStation 3 controller, not a micro B one that you would use with the PlayStation 4 controller. So the controller is fine. It will work with your computer. It does work with my PC and things like that, but I couldn't get it set up with my RetroPie because of the way this is set up with the modes. So unfortunately, I can't show you me playing a fighting game with this controller. So guys, I apologize I couldn't show you this working with my Retro Pie. It would have been good to show you some arcade fighting games with this. The Retro Pie is a little bit choosy about which controllers it works with. If you look at the Retro Pie forums, you'll see lots of people saying that certain controllers aren't working, Bluetooth controllers aren't working correctly. Official controllers like this, Xbox and PlayStation controllers, they're all kind of supported well. There's lots of drivers, things like this aren't working too well and it really comes down to this multi-function mode this is what caused the problem with the retro pie and it's not anything bad about this setup it really just it just happened to not work well with retro pie the first option is kind of general so that would be android and windows two is like multimedia and mouse so effectively what it allows you to do is if you connect to a smart tv or something like that you can use the buttons to control volume you know navigate menus and things like that three is ios and four is iCade, which is also through ios so with me android it was one it worked okay um so i tried it with windows as well and i you know i connected it to my computer and i tried all the buttons everything seemed to be set up okay so if you want to play this with your computer you're not going to have any problems with that it will connect fine Again, as I say, just to stress that the fact that it didn't work with RetroPie isn't a bad thing about this controller because other controllers don't work well with it either. So, is this a good controller? Mm, it's okay. Is it worth the money? Yes, it is. This sells for $10, about £7 or so in the UK. It is quite well made. So, you'll see like the Gen game button is kind of off-center. It moves around a little bit. The select and start would probably be better there rather than up and down. It's, you know, if you're playing it, it's like this. It doesn't really make sense. But it's, it's well made. You know, it's just kind of thick plastic. So this will take a lot of rough and tumble. If you throw it around, you know, it's a cheap controller. You won't care. The buttons are okay. They're clicky. They're responsive. But this isn't going to replace a PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox One or Xbox 360 controller or something like the Wii U Pro controller. It's not going to replace those. It's, it's, but these controllers are about five, six, seven times the price. So you can't really compare them. This is a cheap controller. You get what you pay for. Is it worth $10? Mm, 
Yes, but you're not going to get a classic controller. I mean, this is what you're getting. The Gen Game S5 Bluetooth gamepad. Want to play with your tablet, your smartphone, or your computer? This is actually not too bad a controller to buy. And I can see why lots of people have bought this. So I'll leave a link to the Gear, Gear Best sales page, and you can read more about this with its 420 amp or 400 amp milliamp battery, whether you believe the sales page or the controller. Uh, check it out, and if you're looking for a cheap controller, this might be up your street. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Any questions, post them below, and until next time, take care.